Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to the Path of Wildness meditation for uh, August 2nd, 2016. The Path of Wildness is a, uh, a walk of equanimity, a balanced uh, movement through life, um, keeping in check our emotions such that we uh, are, don't run away with them. That we, uh, not, not suppressing the emotions so much, but uh, managing our response to them in accordance with uh, uh, the good principles that we lay out in the development of our life. Now, I hesitate there because I'm trying to find a right way to say it. The principles are ours, but we can borrow them from elsewhere. So it's very few things that are new and unique at this point in human history in terms of uh, philosophical ideas. But um, the point is to vet out whatever uh, comes your comes your whatever you whatever you uncover in the course of your young life uh, uncovering uh, uh, philosophies of the world and then what works what uh, what stands the test of reason that's a better phrase than what works and I guess that is also means what works then you can run with that you can move adopt that into your uh, into the, your structure your framework so there are three objectives and seven principles on the path of wildness the three objectives are one, to uh, develop and maintain good, sound principles, as I mentioned just a moment ago. Two, to uh, cultivate good emotional reactions to the happenings of our life. To that end, there are uh, uh, free passions, passions, and uh, what we do with those. And I'll get into more of that uh, in just a moment. And then three, um, the uh, performance of good actions and the good actions being defined by actions that are uh, in keeping with the principles that we develop. So let's go over those seven principles now. The first is the atomic principle, which says nothing more than uh, the world is a uh, uh, made of is made of bits and pieces, and uh, that uh, we'll live a better life if we recognize that our existence here is transitory and fleeting, even our uh, state from one day to the next, our composition of what we are, was different yesterday and will change again tomorrow. This also adds a, a bit of an imperative to living to, uh, to, to make hay while the sun shines, so to speak. That, uh, when you have ideas, when you have opportunities to, uh, to venture upon them, unless they'll be gone tomorrow, they will be no more. New may be replaced perhaps by new opportunities or not, as we see sometimes with the diminishing not always the case, but the diminishing faculties of age. The uh, second principle is the uh, principle of, uh, is the social principle that, uh, I'm sorry, the principle of nature, the, that uh, individuals have their, uh, everything in the universe has a particular nature, animate objects and inanimate objects uh, alike, and that uh, we operate well when we can recognize what that nature is, we can make better expectations about how things behave and how others behave. And then uh, if, we, if we can live in accordance with uh, that. In particular, understanding human nature and our own nature. Human nature I define as uh, nothing more than making use of the uh, faculty of, of, our, of our, our, our human faculties that are most endowed and, uh, endowed is not the right word, most developed, just like a lion has teeth and claws to make use of, and an antelope has uh, nimbleness and uh, and, uh, and agility and finely tuned senses to stay alive. Likewise, we humans have our senses, our, our, our abilities, not teeth, not fangs, but big brains. We use those big brains to uh, understand and make sense of the world, <clears throat> to solve problems and to create social structures. So that's our human nature, to, to solve problems, make, uh, uh, understand the world and be social. And uh, individuals have nature too. And uh, we live best when we can come to understand what that is too. And it's a tricky one there because as a young person, it's hard to sometimes understand what your nature is because it may not be fully formed. So it's something we stay attentive to throughout the course of our life. My own personal nature is to uh, walk alone in wild places and to think and uh, to, uh, to reap the fruit that comes of that. The next principle is uh, the social principle. Uh, Social principle simply describes that we are social animals according in accordance with our human nature, that uh, we live best when we uh, uh, 
pursue social ends, uh, looking after the welfare of the, of the group. Inherent in that is a respect, an understanding, respect, and uh, a caution towards the uh, rights of the individual. So any good system, social system, will have at its foundation a uh, uh, some sort of a, a code that identifies what the rights of the individual are. Uh, for example, we'll see that in the United States with the uh, Bill of Rights in our Constitution, which lay out what the individual can expect from the group. Now, this is not a privilege, or this is not a, this is not, it's a right, not a privilege. It's, it's not a, uh, <clears throat> this is an assurance, this is a safeguard to make sure that the in, that as the society pursues the interest of the group, that they do not do so in by in by compromising the welfare of the individual. Because good uh, is an objective thing. Well, uh, there is such a thing as objective good, which is basically put the uh, uh, an improvement in the uh, overall state of well-being of uh, the society uh, uh, and planet caveat is that it can't come at, a, at an unreasonable expense of the individual, unreasonable being defined by the rights rights defined in, in uh, the code that outlines what those, what those rights are. And in my case, I use the United States, as I said before, the Bill of Rights. You can have other things as well. And it's one of the, the tasks that I've set for myself in furthering the path of wildness is to uh, formulate a, a code of individual rights. I have to work on that. But for now, I lean on the Constitution. So, and it's interesting to note that any mature and uh, effective form of government, uh, the most effective form of governments, have those two components. Social, uh, component for social, social well-being and individual protection. The next principle is, and it, so, but coming around to the point of the principle, the social principle means that are we, are we live our best life, our best lives are lived when we pursue social ends, when we try to help the world out towards that net gain of, of, of increased social welfare for all and the planet. The next principle is the uh, uh, principle of temperance, which basically put means uh, consuming less, having a smaller, making a, a smaller footprint on the world, leaving the uh, world uh, uh, in a better place than when you, when you arrived, eh, to put it, to put it ba simply. So temperance, of course, uh, means we think of temperance in terms of alcohol and tobacco and food and drink, but it includes everything else, uh, uh, working, playing, sex, sexual activity, uh, anything you can imagine that just that distracts us uh, from uh, our contemplative life that uh, fills our fills our time and worst not it's not bad to have your time filled but what it is bad to do is to uh, uh, is to run away with the passion run away with your emotions particularly the uh, the letting the pre-passion mature into a passion and then run with that. So the pre-passion being that first initial flush, that feeling you have when something happens, it's the rise of the emotion. Like the example I use is someone cuts in front of us in the car and we uh, feel that pre-passion. Well, you, what are you doing? And then if you run with that and you engage in road rage, then uh, you're, that blows into a full-blown passion. And uh, that is, uh, uh, we want to avoid that because that's letting our emotions get the best of us. I'm not saying that you should be a robot and forever able to uh, not be a human, not be Spock, I mean to, to become Spock, but for the most part we do want to be more like Spock insofar as uh, uh, leading with our reason and uh, recognizing our emotion and letting it have its, have its due time in appropriate forums and venues. Tricky thing to do. I know, it's, I know it's kind of contrary, we sometimes think that, that doesn't sound very human, but it is very human. The next one is, uh, and it's very mature, the next principle is the principle of uh, um, the great indifference, which is nothing more than the fact that the universe doesn't care. It, uh, we have one another, anyone that spent any amount of time alone, or uh, who has liberated themselves from uh, the drudgery of uh, particular tasks that occupy their time and is faced with them, themselves, for a long period of time, comes face to face with this uh, this, this yawning, uh, ga gaping gap of, of uh, what the heck is this all about? What am I doing? Which we can rush to fill with uh, answers, sometimes hastily formed. Likewise, you go out into the wilderness and you encounter the same thing. The universe just 
is there. It's basically almost like a dead entity. Although, you know, I guess it is dead, except for the life here. <laughs> and we can fill it with uh, implied meaning. You know, say, say I, you know, I can converse with God, convene with God out there. Likewise, that uh, systems of uh, religion can give you purpose in, other, uh, in your life, in your social structures as well. But really, I argue that that's just filler. That's your talking to yourself. Uh, that you're uh, 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 a man making, putting a band-aid or, or even covering your eyes to the great indifference. And I advocate that uh, we look at the great indifference, see it for what it is, recognize it for the emptiness, and uh, proceed uh, to develop meaning uh, on our own. So you're basically doing that, but you're doing it under the course of reason, which is the next principle. Reason is the governing faculty, and if it seems like I'm rushing, it's because I'm over 10 minutes now, and um, I may run out of memory here in just a second, so I have to wrap it up. Uh, so reason is the governing faculty. It's the, it's the way that we come to understand what is true in the world by observing facts, coming up with uh, uh, logical structures that, uh, that describe uh, how those facts fit together, and uh, that explain the facts and provide conclusions and uh, predictions about the way the universe works. And if those predictions are true, then we're maybe on to something. You know, you need to rinse and repeat, try again to make sure. But always hold these in tentative uh, uh, acceptance, because uh, new evidence may come tomorrow that shows us otherwise. So it's this constant moving forward by way of, uh, of, of, of objective, objective observation and uh, uh, the use of our of our faculties of logic and uh, the scientific method to discern truth from uh, speculation. Find what the most worthy hypotheses are. The next and uh, final one is uh, virtue. Virtue is the uh, purpose of life. Uh, some argue that if you don't have a God, that you don't have, you have no purpose. But I would say that you can indeed have a purpose. The purpose is uh, defined as. Uh, whatever uh, improves the uh, uh, social welfare of uh, individuals and the planet without compromising the uh, rights of the individual. Uh, so that makes, it makes itself manifest in so many ways. Uh, you, you know, environmental, uh, environmental protection, um, uh, being kind to one another, uh, doing good acts of service, uh, being uh, cautious uh, about our consumption, all these things that basically step down to the path of wildness, which is those, those, those seven things, right? So you, you, can, you can find virtue. Virtue falls like rain in the path of the man or woman who uh, lives their lives uh, understanding that um, they're just here temporarily, that they're changing, undergoing constant change, that they're, uh, they have a particular nature and the humans have a particular nature and our best lives are lived in accordance with that, that there are uh, social, so we are social animals and we need one another and we should work to improve our social well-being, but not uh, cautious of the uh, of the rights of the individuals. 